Well, praise the Lord. This is Apostle, and we're welcoming you to our Sunday morning broadcast. And we're going to get back into the Word of God today and see what the Holy Ghost has to say to us as we continue to walk in the revelation of God's Word. God is so good to us today, and we're looking forward to Him speaking mightily to us so that we can go forward and do the things that He's called us to do. Praise God. I pray that uh, you've been being blessed by this this uh, seminar on social media addiction, and I pray that you continue to listen to and hear the voice of the Lord. Now, let me say this to you as we get ready to get started here. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter uh, 5, in Ephesians chapter 4, he talks about that God has sent some apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers uh, to the church for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry. And so as a, as, a, as a pastor and as an apostle, God has given me a word to share with the people of God. And so these words are coming to you from the Lord, even though he's using me as a vessel, but I'm preaching the word and I'm preaching the word to you. So take heed and listen to what the word of God says, because we must be obedient to that word. This is the word that the Lord has given for the body of Christ. And so as this message is going out to the body of Christ, I pray that you're hearing the voice of the Lord and that you're being obedient to the word of God. Praise the name of Jesus. So we're going to get into the word. We're going to see what the Holy Spirit has to say to us today. And I pray that you walk in this revelation because God's revelation is, is, is so powerful and it is so, so, so very, very powerful for you and I. And so we've got to walk in this re revelation. We've got to walk in this authority that God has given us. And we need to understand that God has his word ready for us to walk in every revelation of truth and every revelation of his power and of his anointing. So we're going to get into the word, see what the Holy Ghost has to say, and then we'll walk in the revelation of God's truth. Praise God. All right, so we're going to be talking about preparation before entering the cyber world. Now, we shared with you uh, a Friday night that the cyber world is controlled by Satan. And if you don't understand that, or if you don't agree with that, then you're calling God a liar. And so this is the truth because he is the prince of the power of the air. And therefore you have to understand that whatever is going through the airwaves is being touched and attacked and is trying to be manipulated and controlled by the devil because he has that authority. And the only ones that he does not have that authority over in things that are going across the airwaves are those Christians who have submitted their lives to the Lord and they're yielding to the power of the Holy Spirit and exercising their dominion and their, their, their authority over these particular areas of the cyber world that they are entering into. So now I want you to understand something. This, this, this section of the service, the service here says preparation before entering the cyber world. You need to prepare yourself before you go into the cyber world. You and I need to prepare ourselves. And what that means is anything that is in you, anything that you are, are dealing with, anything that you're wrestling with and you're having a problem with, you need to get that straight with God and you need to get that straight within yourself before you go on social media because it's those areas of temptation. Remember what the Bible said, that the devil, our adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. So he's taking his time trying to figure out what areas in your life that I can sift you in and I can get in. And so you need to under, understand when you're going into his territory, you must be covered. And that's why I was talking about uh, Friday about the whole armor of God covering you. And so today we're going to share with you what God says about going into cyber world. Now, remember, this is a literal world. It is a world within this world 
that the devil is using to destroy the lives of many people. Now, again, like I've said before, and I said many times, the apps and all of those uh, things that are that are on the internet, they're not either good or bad, but it is who is using them. And since these things are going through the airwaves, they have to go through Satan's authority. And therefore Satan contaminates it and he, 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 he uses it. And then the people that use the app, he contaminates them and uses them to use the app the way he wants them to use it. So you got to be on point with God so that you won't be sucked up into the vortex of worldliness and carnality. And so today we're going to see what God says about preparing yourself. So now this is probably the most important uh, scripture that I'm going to share with you today. I can't think of anything that might be even more important than this one, because this is when God tells you how he wants you to act. If you don't act like this, you are in re direct rebellion against God. We're going to go to the book of first John chapter two and listen to what Jesus said. This is Jesus speaking himself. And in 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 through 17, the Lord Jesus says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. What powerful revelation, what powerful instructions. And we've heard this millions of times. But you need to understand the depth and the importance of this, because if you're not walking in this, notice what he says in verse 15. If any man love the world, the love of the father is not in him. Now, you need to understand that. Do you see what Jesus see? This is Jesus talking. This is not apostle. This is not a uh, prophet or evangelist or pastor. This is Jesus himself speaking. And he's saying something to us that you need and I need to listen to and take heed to. Now, let's find out what does he mean by loving the world and the things that are in the world and the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. What in the world does he mean? Well, I'm glad you asked me that question because now we're going to find out what he meant. Listen to what the word says. The word says love not. Do you see that? Love not or do not love the world. Well, the first thing we need to find out is let's talk about the world and then we'll talk about love. Let me break down the word world first. It's the word cosmos and that, that word means the world and, and listen to what I'm talking about. It's talking about the order that the world operates in, its arrangement and its regular dispensation. In essence, what God is saying here is don't love the way the world is set up, the way it is arranged and the way that its disposition is going forth. Because this present world, the Bible calls Satan, the God, small case G of this world. He, has, he is dictating the present order of things as they're happening in the world. This word also means world. It also means the, the idea, it carries along the idea of worthlessness and the evil, both physical and moral. It's talking about the seat and the cares and the temptations and the irregular or ungodly desires of the people that are in the world. You need to understand something that the world here that he's talking about what God is talking about, what Jesus is talking about. He's talking about this world, the way it is set up, the way this world system runs. 
Satan is the God of this world. Why? Because Adam gave him the authority over this world and therefore he controls the airwaves, he controls the land and he controls the sea and he controls those that are in the world. He controls the animals. This is why we have death and destruction and all of that because when God created Adam in the beginning and he created all of the animals, everything was in perfect harmony. There were no animals attacking any other animals. There was no death. But as soon as sin came into the world, then animals turned against people and people turned against animals. Come on, somebody, because before sin came into the world, there was no animals that had to die. You need to understand something. There were no animals killing each other. And you need to understand that before Adam and Eve came in, I mean, when Adam and Eve came into the world, there was no homosexuality in the world. There was no abortion in the world. There was no lying. There was no stealing. There was no cheating. There was no murder. There was no sin whatsoever. There was no getting high off of drugs. There, come on, somebody. There was no lying and cheating and, 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 and racism and all of the stuff that we see that's going on. This that we see and experience now in the world that's going on. This is the world system. This is the world order. It's how men treat their wives. It's how wives treat their husbands. It's how parents treat their children. It's how children treat their parents. It's how family members interact with each other. It's how friends treat each other and interact. It's how enemies treat each other and interact. It's how people interact with people that they're just meeting. You need to understand this world system has been set up and it has been altered from its original creation by Satan. And he is exercising the authority in the world and also its arrangement, how it operates. And so what the devil has done is he has infiltrated the world. He has infiltrated the earth with his power of worthlessness and evil. He has infiltrated the world with physical and moral evil. He has infiltrated people, every human on earth, over 8 billion people on earth. Every single human on earth has evil in them. They have the sin nature in them. That is the ability to know evil to love evil and to produce evil. And so all of us have it in us. But what has happened is many people have not been delivered from the power of their sin nature because the only way that you can get victory over your sin nature is you have to give your life to Jesus and not only just give your life to Jesus, you have to submit to him as your Lord or as your master. See, as your master and as your Lord, then you obey him and you do what he says. So when you see something in the scripture and he tells you not to do it and then you go ahead on and do it then he's not your lord he's not your master and therefore he's not he's no I says not he's not he's not obligated to protect you when the devil comes to tear your life up you need to understand something because there are a lot of christians that are disobeying the word they are not their morals are compromised their physical lifestyles are compromised and it's compromised because they're living in a corrupt world you need to understand if I could give you a revelation of a vision, listen to what I'm saying. Now, if God would open your eyes and let you see into the spirit realm, I want you to understand this now. If he would open your eyes and let you see into the spirit realm, what you would see in the world is a completely dark place filled with evil spirits. And it would be so deep and it would be so dark. It is filled with evil. It is filled with spirits. If he would let you see just the satanic side in the spirit realm. Now there's another side in the spirit realm where the presence of God overrides and overrules everything. But in the lives of people who have not submitted to God, who have not yielded to God, what they see is what the devil has blinded their minds to the gospel. And so all they see is what the devil wants them to see. And therefore, their worlds are filled with spirits. Their worlds are filled with demons and darkness and evil and wicked and hatred and everything under the sun that you could imagine. And if you would see in the spirit realm, you would 
would see fallen angels everywhere. The world would just be covered with it. It, it would be just a, you've ever seen a beehive when there's just hundreds and hundreds and thousands of bees just covering that beehive so that you can't even see the beehive for all the bees. That's how the world would look. It's covered over by demonic spirits and fallen angels. And so the only way that you could see into the spirit realm where God would want you to see is you'd have to open up to the Lord and yield to his presence so that he could then allow you to see, even though the world is covered up with all of this darkness, above that darkness is the light of God. It is the two thirds of the angels of God that are twice as many as the, the fallen angels of Satan. And they are standing there in clothed in white robes and white linen with their swords drawn, walking in the authority and the power of God, ready to pounce on anything that any Christian in the earth would try to uh, speak and use their authority to come against. When you use your authority and come against something in the darkness of this world, then the angels of the Lord take that word and they go to perform that word. The Bible said the angels of the Lord excel in strength. And then the Bible said, hearkening unto the voice of the word. In other words, when a Christian speaks, the word, then the angels hear that word and they go to perform that word and they cut through all the darkness, cut through all of the fallen angels, cut through all of the demons, and they begin to enforce in that particular area of life. And then light comes into that area where darkness once ruled. I hope you hear what I'm saying. So we need to understand the world has been covered with evil by Satan and the people in this world, most of the people in this world, if, even though everybody in this world has a sin nature, but there are few people in comparison to the total amount of people on earth that are actually yielding to the spirit of God so that they're not being ruled by their sin nature. They're being ruled by the spirit of God. So this is what God wants you to see. So this is the world. It's Satan's system. It is his arrangement, how he has this system set up, and it is filled with physical and moral evil, temptations, and irregular and, ir and, and Ill illegal desires. This is what the world is. Now, notice what the Bible says, what Jesus says. He says, do not love this kind of world. You see that? Don't love the world. And what world is he talking about? This world I just described to you. Now notice the word love there is the word agapeo. And that word means to esteem something. And it means to love something with your emotions. It, 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 it talks about it's a direction of your will to find your joy in something or somebody. In other words, you love it, you regard it with strong affection. Can you understand now that when Jesus says love, Love not the world. He is saying, do not direct your will and find your joy in this world system the way it is set up. He said, don't you love it? Don't you regard it? And don't you have strong affection for it? Because when you love it, when you regard it, and when you have strong affection for it, you'll submit to it. This is what Jesus is trying to get you and I to see. But so many Christians see what's going on in the world and they make a decision of their will, watch this now, to find joy in the things that the world is offering. But you need to understand something I'm gonna share with you a little later on in this verse, what Jesus says, what the world does to you after it captivates you. But I want you to understand. So the world is offering you something. Man, remember now, the devil is the one that's controlling it. You remember when Jesus was on the mountain after he had come off of when he had stuck, when he had been in the wilderness for 40 days and fasting and the Bible said the devil took him up into a, a exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world. And then he said, all this I will give thee because it's been delivered unto me. If you will bow down and worship me, all shall be thine. The devil was lying, but I want you to understand something. The devil makes this world system and he makes it look appealing to you. Yes, even you Christians, because e even though we're Christians and we got the Holy Ghost and we've got authority, we still got a sin nature and you got to keep crucifying that thing every single day. And I'm not just talking about you get up in the morning and you do your uh, morning devotions and you say, I bind my spirit and I, I, I bind the, 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 the sin nature and I bind all of the evil and the temptations and you do it that once in the morning and then you can just go the rest of the day and don't even think about it. No, you got to constantly 
Paul said it like this. I keep under my body. I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. Why? He said, I beat it into subjection. Why? Because he knows that at any moment, at any time, that sin nature is rising up. I'm going to show you how it operates. And it rises up and the devil is always speaking to you in your sin nature, trying to get you to listen to it and stop listening to God. And so you need to understand that when you begin to yield to the spirit of God, you got to constantly be doing that all day long, 24 hours a day, because sin is always presenting itself to you all day long. You can be sitting in a room, no music on, the curtains drawn, you got your lamp on, you got some light in there, and you can just be sitting in the room and, and just minding your own business and thoughts will begin to come to you that are evil and wicked. Thoughts will begin to come. You'll hear voices in your mind. The, you'll, the devil will bring things up in, in your memory of things that happened in the past. See, all of these attacks, so you cannot just take uh, 15, 20, 30 minutes or an hour of prayer in the morning and say that I'm done with now seeking the Lord. No, you got to stay before God all day. I, did y'all just hear what I said? You got to stay with God all day long because everybody you meet, the devil is going to try to pull something off of you or put something on you uh, by those people. Every circumstance and situation that you come in contact with, the devil is going to try to put something on you or pull something off of you through those circumstances and situations. You say, oh my God, well, if that's the case, then I always got to be in prayer. I always got to be seeking the Lord. Uh, yeah, you got it. That's how we are supposed to be living. That's how we're supposed to be living on a constant day. God's got to be on your mind 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You got to understand that. And the best why that's why he said you got to be sober. You can't be drunk with this world. You can't be drunk. See, when the Bible talks about loving the world, it talks about you, you direct your own will, your decision making power to find joy in the world. And anything in this world, you cannot and have been commanded by God not to direct your will and find your joy in anything in this world. Well, then how am I going to enjoy stuff? I mean, there's money in the world, there's houses in the world, there's finances in the world, there's, 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 there's jobs in the world, there's opportunity. Well, I got the love. No, no, see, see, you're missing the point. See, when you find your affection and that thing begins to take control of your will and your mind and you begin to love that thing and you find your joy in it and you find your sustenance in it and you find your acceptance in it what you have done is you have replaced the only one who can give you all of those things which is God and you have allowed the things that are in the world to take the place of God in your life if I could just get a million dollars if I could just get seven million dollars all my problems would be over if I could just win that $600 million lottery. My problems would be over. No, they wouldn't. That would just be $600 million that you got. But $600 million cannot buy you peace. $600 million cannot buy you health. $600 million cannot buy you joy because the devil knows that once he gets the money in your hand, come on and listen to what I'm saying. Then he has all 600 million avenues of how to come and attack you and jack you up. Now, money is not evil, but the love of the money is evil. That's why the Bible said, for the love of money is the root of all evil. See, when you set your affection on finances, when you set your affection on getting rich, when you set your affection on having a supernaturally rich life, you need to understand something. You better watch and gauge what you're doing, because if you're doing that and you want to get rich because you want to have money instead of being rich because you want to obey God and please God and be a supplier and a financer of the gospel, see, you can allow your good intentions to be taken over and you can get deceived and caught up. You don't mess around with that stuff. Anything, money is just a, a, an object. 
It's just a medium of exchange. And you cannot allow yourself to be identified and, and accept yourself based off of how much money you have, how much property you have, how much influence you think you have, how many friends you have. None of those things matter because that's how the world system operates. Your, your success is determined by numbers. Come on, somebody. You got a church and, ch and church and pastors fall for this all the time. Uh, uh, a lot of times pastors and they meet pastors and they meet them for the first time, the first thing they ask them, how many members you got and how many, how many folks you got? And then they also ask them, how much you bringing in every, every week? How much money are you bringing in? Now, instead of, watch this, this is just, listen, I know I've been around pastors. I've met pastors multiple times over the years and I know what they talk about. And so what you have to understand is why would they be asking how many members you got? What difference does it make how many members you got? If you got one member and you're ministering to that one member, then guess what? When that member gets saved, guess what? All of heaven rejoices. So as far as God's concerned, the person with one member and the person with a thousand members, it's the same to God because the people that the pastor is over is the person that God loves and he died for him. So he wants that person to be blessed. So it's not about the numbers, but see a lot of times that's what we do in the world because the church has taken over the world's love. And so they're loving the world. And so they don't see themselves successful unless they got a certain number of members sitting in the pews. But you can have a thousand members and 999 of them are evil. They're controlled by the sin nature. Now, just because you got numbers, that doesn't mean that that's a, that, that's a, um, a sign that God has blessed you. You want to know why? Because you need to understand something. God only blesses what God has submitted to him. Do you think the Muslims are submitted to God? No, they're not. Guess what? But there are millions of them that go to Mecca. Come on and listen to what I'm saying. Minister China was praying about that today. They go to their uh, different places of, of prayer and they meet and there can be thousands and millions of them there. But just because they got numbers, that doesn't mean that that's anointed and, and ordained by God. No, it's not. So you can't go by numbers because if that's the case, then the Muslims are more blessed by God than most of the church is. Come on and hear what I'm saying. You need to understand the power of God. He is saying, do not love this world system and all that the world system can offer you. Remember what God said? He said, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in his glory. Did you see that? My God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus, not by your job, not by your investment. Come on, somebody. And so folks are now so caught up in all these different ways of making money and all of these different investments and all of that. Let me tell you something about that. If you don't submit your life to Jesus and then let the Holy Ghost direct you as to how he wants you to use your finances, you're under the, the love of this world system. And, and so you need to understand that. Now, hear what I'm saying, because somebody will say, well, now you got to operate within the world system, because if you don't operate in the world system, system, it ain't going to work. See, that's where you're wrong. Because see, even though the devil is the God, small case G of this world, God is the God over everything. And God rules everything. Even when the devil is trying to rule, God's rule overrules the devil. So what you're doing is you're listening to the devil's way of doing things. But God is saying, if you follow my way of doing things, you don't have to follow the devil's path. And I will add unto you. That's why God said, don't be seeking money. Don't be seeking these things. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of these things that the Gentiles seek after, you know, those people in the world that love the world, all these things that they seek after will be added unto you. The Bible says the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. In other words, in the Amplified, it says the wealth of the unjust will eventually find its way into the hands of the just. What God is saying is he will allow unsaved people to work and work the system and work the world system and make all of this money. And then once they made all of this money, God will have them turn it over to the saints. What well, the saints have just been seeking God and seeking the face of God. And so you need to understand this is God's way of blessing us. So he says, don't you dare love the world. Don't you dare put your affections on the world. Now we're going to show you what he means by loving the world, the world system. But now notice what he says. 
Love not the world. And I know I've explained it to you. Now, if you don't understand it, you just don't want to understand it. Love not the world, neither the things. Do you see that? Things? That's the stuff in the world. Don't put your affection and put your joy in the things of the world. If I had me a Mercedes, oh, if I just had that Mercedes, that would be my life. That would just make me feel like I'm somebody. And so you get that Mercedes and then you start worshiping it. And instead of going to church on Sunday, you're out there on Sunday morning washing that car and washing the rims and making sure that your, your black wall tires are shining and your rims are shining so that when you get in your car on a Sunday afternoon when it's a sunny day and you can cruise down the street and everybody can see your ride and that's the thing that you you're loving, but you walked away from the God that has even given you life to even get the car in the first place. You need to understand something. You don't love the things that are in the world. This kind of love that God is talking about is talking about you find your joy and your affection in those things and you regard them with strong affection. Now notice what he says here. Love not the world, neither. This is preparing you for entering into cyber world. You got to have this down pat in your spirit and soul before you go on the internet and get on any app because if you don't, you're going to get sucked up into that thing. Watch this now. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man, listen, do you all hear what this says? If any man, it didn't say any man that is not a Christian. It just said if any man, that man come, come, talks about those are supposed to be Christians and those that are supposed to be un, un, unsaved people. If any man love the world, if you love this world system that we've already described to you of how this system is set up and this is this worthlessness and this physical and moral evil and the temptations and the irregular passions and desires and the evil passions and desires of this world. If that's what you love, then the word says the love of the father is not in him. Why? You can't love God and then love that which is anti God. Anything that is against God that you love, then you have made that thing your God and you have rejected the love of God and you have rejected the God of your salvation. So you need to understand that. Now, why don't you, doesn't God want you loving the world? He said, if any man love the world, the love of the father is not any. Watch this, because all that is in the world. See, the, this is what the world has. Everything, this is what is in the world. In this world system, I, I want to get you. Let me look in your eyes. Look, uh, look, look, look at me right here. Look at look at me right now. Let me tell you something. The world system is against God. It is anti-Christ. The way that the devil has set it up is anti-Jesus. Now, I'm going to show you what this world system offers you. And I'm going to show you that when you bite into or accept what the world system offers you, then you're going to accept the very same thing that caused the world to be in the shape that it's in now. Listen to what the word says. The word says, for all that is in the world, everything that's in the world, the lust of the flesh, now that's one thing, the lust of the eyes, that's number two. And the pride of life, that's number three, is not of the Father, but is of the world. Do you see that? All that is in the world. See, this is why God says don't love the world. Because all that's in the world, the only thing the world can offer you is the lust of your flesh, the lust of your eyes, and the pride of your life. I hope you're understanding that because you need to understand that God is trying to get you to see something that is so powerful and it is so revelatory because this is what God wants us to know. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And it is not of the Father, but it is of the world. Now, I want to show you this. Notice now, you see the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. It is not of the Father, but it is of the world. Now, I want you to go with me, and I'm going to take you to Genesis chapter 3, and we're going to see exactly what this word teaches us. Look at Genesis chapter 3, and let's take a look at verse 1. I want you to see this because this is so powerful, and this is so mightily revelatory 
to you and I and we and us. This is so powerful. Listen to this. Genesis chapter three, it says in verse one, now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, yea, hath God said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die. For God does know that in the day that you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open and you shall be as gods knowing good and evil. Now we understand that's a lie because they were already in the image and likeness of God and they knew good. God didn't want them having a knowledge to know love and to produce evil. That's what the devil offered them there. And it was coming from the world. It was coming from the world system that was already set up in Satan even before he got control of the world. And so he had to use his deception on Eve and, 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 and cause Adam to become frozen so that he wouldn't even come on somebody. It's, it's bad when the men of God are frozen and they will not use their authority to break the power of the devil. When the devil is showing up, you as a man of God, you got to walk in your authority and stop being afraid and stop being scared of the devil and speak the word of God and determine that what you say is going to manifest in the life of you and anybody that you got anything to do with. See, this is where Adam failed because he didn't, he wasn't deceived. Adam stood right there and let the devil jam his wife up. And you need to understand that. That's why God didn't blame Eve. He said Eve was deceived, but Adam wasn't deceived. And so you need to understand something now. So now the devil is speaking to Eve and he's telling you, you'll be just like God knowing good and evil. But in essence, that's not true. They were already in the image and likeness of God. Now notice Notice what he goes on to say. Watch this now. In verse six, remember what the Bible said? For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life, it is not of the father. All right now, now notice what here. God didn't, in verse five, he said, for God does know in the day that you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open and you shall be as God's knowing good and evil. So this tree and what was on the tree was nothing on that tree that was going to be any benefit for Adam and Eve. The only thing this tree was going to do was launch them into the ability to know evil, to love evil and to produce evil. So this tree and eating of this tree was not of God and they were forbidden to eat of that tree. But now let's take a look at verse six and woman, the woman saw that the tree was good for food. Do you see that? It says she saw that the tree was good for food. No, it wasn't. It wasn't good for food because God told them not to eat of it. All of the trees in the garden, he said, you may freely eat. That which is what was good for food. The fruit that was on the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was not good food. It was poison. And you need to understand that the devil always will give you something and make it look good to you in order for you to eat it. But it's laced with poison. You know, that's how people uh, would sometimes uh, when somebody would have a guard dog or something and, and, and they had the dog running loose and a person wanted to break in on somebody's property and they knew that they had dogs. And what they would do is they would get a steak, a nice, big, juicy red steak. But then they would lace the steak with poison. Then they would throw it over the fence. And when the dog would smell the steak, the dog would run and eat the steak up. And once the dog ate the steak, the dog would also eat the poison. And when the poison worked on the dog until it killed the dog, then the people had free access to walk onto the property and break into the home. This is what the devil does. He knows that he got to get inside of your spirit. He's got to get inside your soul. He's got to get inside your mind. So he presents stuff that looks nice to you, but it's laced with poison. And when you eat it, then that poison takes you over and then devil has complete and total access to your life. This is what was going on. Now let's get back and see what happened to Eve when this took place. Watch this now. 
So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that is the, watch this now, that's the lust of the flesh, hungry. Remember, if thou be the son of God, command this, these rocks that they may made bread. Come on, somebody. He was trying to deal with her appetite, her hunger. It was the lust of the flesh. That was the lust of the flesh. Then notice what it says. And then, and then it was pleasant to the eyes. The lust of the flesh, right? And the lust of the eyes. The devil wants to make things look pretty to you. You ever noticed in the, the beer and the wine commercials, everything is nice and pretty on the beach and all of that, everybody in the bathing suits and they're drinking and having a good time. They make it look pretty, but they don't show you the accidents. They don't show you the death and the destruction of lives. They don't show you the people whose livers have been eaten completely up and their bodies have shriveled up. They don't show you that now because the devil only wants to show you the pretty stuff. And then once you bite the pretty, you take the poison. And when you take the poison, you need to understand that the poison you're eating when you're taking stuff from the devil is the poison of sin and death. It's called the law of sin and death, poverty, sickness, and spiritual death, spiritual separation from God. This is what the devil wants you to have. And this is what he wants to place in you. Let's keep going and sin. what's so that's the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes, and then a tree to be desired to make one wise. That's the pride of life. So now she wants to be wise. She didn't have to be wise. She already was wise. She had the wisdom of God in her. He had the wisdom of God in him. They didn't need any more wisdom. The only wisdom they were going to get was sensual wisdom, sensual evil, the ability to know love and to produce evil. This is what they were going to get. And so this is what the devil promised them. Do you see what I'm saying here? This is how the devil operates on people. And he, he goes through the desires of your body. That's the lust of the flesh. The desires of your eyes. He makes it look pretty. You get hungry for it in your body. Then you you want to you want to be entertained by it through your eyes and then you want to be made somebody and to be uh, filled with something that the world has given you so that you can walk around with your head above your shoulders and your head up high walking around like you are God's gift to the world. See, that's the pride of life when you don't need anything from God because you've got everything you need to make you happy from the world. That's the pride of life. And God said all of that is not of the father, but it is of the world. World. That's the world system giving it that to you. Now, I want to share this with you. Oh, my goodness, this is powerful. I'm not going to be able to finish all of this today, but praise God. We're going to go with this until we finish. Praise God. God is so good. I am so excited about this word. Let's listen and see what God also says in this verse. This verse is so powerful. It's so packed with revelation. It's so packed with truth. You need to see what else God is saying here. I'm trying to help somebody. Listen to what the word of God is saying. I'm preaching to you right now. I'm preaching to myself right now. We've got to listen to this word. We've got to obey this. I'm telling you, this word is our life. You've got to have this word. You got to live this word. This word has to become your passion. And too many Christians don't have a passion for the word of God. They don't have a hunger. The Bible said they that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. See, and you've got to hunger for this word. You got to thirst for this word. You got to make yourself want to eat this word. You got to change your love instead of loving the world and finding your joy in the things of the world. You got to find your joy in the kingdom of God and find your joy in studying the word of God, which is your spiritual food, because it's the word that feeds you. It's the word that heals you. It's the word that delivers you. It's the word that profits you. It's the word that takes you to heaven. It's the word that keeps the devil off your back. It's the word that allows you to go into the kingdom of darkness and have authority over the devil. It's the word that gives you joy. It's the word that gives you peace. It's the word that gives you long suffering. It's the word that gives you temperance. It's the word that gives you faithfulness. It's the word that gives you gentleness. It's the word that gives you kindness. It's the word that gives you long suffering. It's the word that gives you endurance. You need to hear what the word is saying. Love the word and not the world. Listen to God. Watch this. This is what happens 
when you don't obey the word. Look at verse 17. And the world passeth away. You see that? And the world passeth away and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. You see that? The world passes away and the lust of the world passes away. That's the passions. That's the desires of the world. You know, the stuff that you left God for because you want to find your joy in the world. Your passion is in the world. He said the world is going to pass away and the lust thereof. Now, what you I want to show you something because I'm going to give you a revelation. I'm going to give you a truth here because, see, when 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 you look at that and you read that. And it says the world passeth away and the lust thereof. You may think, and many people think, because I used to think this until the Holy Spirit. And as I meditated and prayed and I studied in the word, God gave me revelation as to what he actually meant. See, when the Bible, when the Bible said, and the world passeth away and the lust thereof, many people think, and many Christians think, and you may think, I don't know, you might think this, like I used to think it, is that when it says the world passes away and the lust thereof, that means that the world is going to pass away and the lust is going to pass away. You know, when there's a new heaven and a new earth, when Jesus comes back, and 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 cast the devil in uh uh, into the lake of fire, Satan and, and, and the Christ and, and the false prophet and Satan all in cast into the lake of fire. And so when that world passes away, and so that's what we think, that's what the world is passing away. That's not what he's talking about. I want to show you what he's actually talking about. Let's look at that scripture again. It is not talking about the world's going to pass away when there's a new heaven and a new earth. He's not talking about that. He's talking about something completely different. Look at this. And the world passeth away. You see that? Passeth away. And the lust passeth away. Now, the word passeth away is the word para. And that word, watch this now. Watch this now because this is something here. This word means to lead you, to lead you along a path. Watch this now. To lead you along a path away from the things of God. It means to lead you into the path of disappearing and perishing. Did you all just hear what I said? I said this word passeth away means that it leads you. It means this word means to lead. It comes from the word. It's the word para. And that word means by or past and ago, which means to lead. It means to lead you along, lead you past lead you by something. It leads you along the pathway of darkness. It leads your feelings and your passions into the pathway of darkness to cause you to disappear and to cause you to perish. So in essence, what God is saying is when he says the world and uh, passeth away and the lust thereof, what he's talking about is your love for the world. And the lust of the flesh and the lust of your eyes and the lust and the, and the pride of your life, what it is doing is when you yield to it, it leads you, come on somebody, and it leads you to the direction and the path of your own destruction. You mean to hear what I'm saying? It's not saying that the, the world, the lust of the world and the, and, and the passions of the world is going to go away when the world is judged and there's new heaven and a new earth. It's talking about the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life and the love of the world. It, when you grab a hold to it and you possess it, it actually possesses you. And then it starts leading you and carrying you down a path where you will be destroyed. That's what this word is talking talking about. That's why he said you don't, the lust of the flesh is not of the father because the lust of the flesh, God would never lead you into something that's going to destroy you. The world offers you. Remember I said the world makes all this stuff look pretty, but the end result is to destroy you and to, to swallow you up and to make you disappear and to make you perish. This is what God is trying to get you to see. The love of the world is not of God. And when you are following this stuff, you're following the path way of darkness. I pray that you're getting something out of this. Come on and let's go to the book and I'm going to show you how the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life 
It's not of the Father, but it is of the world. I'm going to show you in the Bible where God tells you that it is not of the Father. And, and, and it is not, but it is of the world. And I'm going to show you how this thing actually works. I want to show you how this works because this lust is going to carry you and take you along a path. Remember, a, a, the, the world, the way the world system is, the world system is set up to lead you to live a certain kind of way. And that, that lust that you have is leading you in the world system's path, which is taking you to destruction straight as the way. And, and narrow is the gate that leadeth unto life, and few be, there be that find it. But wide is the gate, and broad is the way to destruction, and many there be that go in thereat. See, that's what the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life do. They, watch this now, they pass you along the pathway of destruction to destroy you. Now, I'm going to show you how that works. Go to the book of Galatians chapter 5. Follow me to Galatians chapter five and praise God. We'll end up here in Galatians chapter five for today. And then we'll pick this up again on Thursday. Praise God. Galatians chapter five. And let's take a look at verse 16. Galatians five and verse 16. Listen to what the scripture says. This I say that, see that? please hear the word of the Lord. This I say then walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. God says, if you walk in the spirit, and that word walk means to tread and to walk a path and to follow a certain direction. So when you're following the path of the spirit, when you're being led by the spirit, the Bible said they that are led by the spirit of God are the sons and daughters of God. If you're not being led by the spirit of God, you're not the son and the daughter of God. Because whoever leads you is who your allegiance is to. Whoever leads you is your master. Whoever leads you is your Lord. That's why the Bible said in the book of Romans, whom you yield yourself servants to obey, they are your masters indeed. You need to understand something. God wants you to understand who you obey is the one that you have given Godship in your life. Come on and listen to what I'm saying. That's why you got to give your life to Jesus and accept him as your Lord, your master. Because if you don't, then everything that you are following is taking you to a path away from the Lord and away from the things of God and taking you and carrying you into the pathway of judgment. And I'm telling you, you don't want the judgment of God because that's eternal death where your spirit and soul and your body, because see, people don't realize that when a person dies and their spirit and soul leave their body and, and watch what happens now. When the person's spirit and soul leave their body, if they're a Christian, the Bible said to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord, which means that if you die and you're a Christian, then immediately, as soon as your spirit and soul leave your body and your body drops to the ground, then your spirit and soul are immediately in the presence of God in heaven. But now a person who dies that is not a Christian, when their body drops to the ground, it lays there on the ground, but their spirit and soul is transported into hell and they there, their spirit and soul is burning in the fire of hell. Yes, it is right there in the center of the earth. But now notice, but when the great white throne judgment comes and everybody's going to be resurrected from the dead. See, people just think that saints are going to be resurrected from the dead, but even the unsaved people, their bodies are going to be resurrected from the dead and their bodies are going to be rejoined with their spirit and their soul. And then God is going to take the righteous saints who have now been rejoined joined with God, with their spirit and soul, and they will be in heaven with God, living in a new heaven and a new earth. But the unsaved, every unsaved person who have followed the path and the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and have followed that pathway, when they are resurrected, their bodies will be resurrected from the dead and their bodies will be rejoined with their spirit and their soul. And then their bodies will be cast into the lake of fire. And no, no, Watch this now. This is so powerful because, see, God's going to take them out of the fire of hell and then cast them into the lake of fire. And God's going to cast death and hell into the lake of fire. What kind of fire burns up another fire? I'm telling you, that's terrible stuff. And you need to understand that. That's why God said, walk in the spirit 
and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So you got to be saved. You got to serve God. Now he said, if you walk in the spirit, then you won't obey your flesh. So if you're obeying your flesh, if you're obeying your flesh, then that means you're not obeying the spirit. You're not following the spirit because the spirit of God will never lead you to sin. The spirit of God will never lead you to do anything other than the will of God in your life. So if you find yourself and we have all done it, all of us have messed up, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, even after we didn't got born again, saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost on our way to heaven and mighty burning fire and all that. And also glad we have still all walked away from and not been led by the spirit all the days of our lives. And even after we've become a Christian and gotten into the word and got filled with the Holy Ghost, we still do stuff sometimes that the Holy Ghost didn't lead us to do. And so we have to repent and we have to pray. That's why the Bible is first John one nine is in there in the new Testament. That's after Jesus has resurrected. He said, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness because God knows that even in these bodies that we have now, we got a sin nature, even though we got the Holy Ghost and we're supposed to be yielded to the Holy Ghost, but we don't always. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Every last one of y'all listening to me right now, you know exactly what I'm talking about. When you didn't, you overwrote what the Holy Ghost was doing because you gave into your flesh and you just wanted to do what your flesh said. We've all been there. We've all done that. We've wore the t-shirt. We've done the commercial. We've walked in the movie started in the movie and all of that stuff but i'm here to tell you but the grace of god pulled us back and we yielded to the grace of god and we repented of our sin but some folks get out there and they get so caught up and they love the world that they don't want to listen to god and they resist it and they resist instruction they resist correction they resist the presence of god ministering to their lives and therefore guess what happens they stay out there messed up and so this is what god is trying to get you and i to see and so he says, so this I say, then walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So your sin nature has lust. Now watch this verse 17 for the flesh, your sin nature, your flesh is your ability to know evil, to love evil and to produce evil. That's what the flesh is. And so it says for the flesh lusteth against the spirit. So the desires, and we'll talk about what that word lust is, that word lust there, it's the word epithumio, and it comes from, watch this, the word epi, which means in, and thumos, in the mind. Now you need to understand something, that means to have the affections directed towards something, to desire and to long after something. And notice what now, it means to like something, it means to sympathize with something, it means to have a strong affection for something and it means to yearn after something it means to wish for something and it's your choice that you're doing this and it means to deliberately will for that thing you need to understand that's what this word lust means now as long as this this word lust because the word lust just talks about having a strong affections and and your will and it is directed to desire and to long after something the word lust there is neither good or bad it just means the strong desires but what you lust after. That's what the problem, that's where the problem comes in. So now notice, notice who's doing the lusting. The flesh is lusting in you against the spirit and the spirit of God against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other so that you cannot do the things that you would. Notice what he said, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit. It has strong passions. It has strong desires and it longs after and it sympathizes and it has a strong affection for and it yields to and it wishes and it makes it deliberately it it, it, its will is deliberately to go against the spirit of God. See, that's what your flesh, your flesh goes against the spirit of God. It's got a strong passion. It hates the spirit of God. It doesn't want to do anything that the spirit of God does. So the flesh lusts against the spirit and then the spirit of God in you 
lusts against the flesh. So the Spirit of God has strong affections and has directed his desire toward you, his longing for you, his sympathizing for you, his liking you, his having a strong affection and a yearning for you, and his wish for you, implying your choice. And he wants you to will deliberately that you will follow after the passions of the Spirit instead of the passions of your flesh. So you got a war going on. So it says the flesh, your sin nature, and see, all of us have got it. You need to understand that. All of us have got it. We all have a desire to love evil, to know evil, and to produce evil. And at certain times in your life, it rises up. Oh, yeah. You ever said you ever had somebody uh, uh, do something to you and it gets you so mad and you want to cuss them out or you want to you want to kill them or you want to hit them or you want to. And that thing rises up and the thought comes to your mind. See, that's your flesh. That's your flesh. And it rises up. See, you're not exempt from your flesh uh, giving you its desires. Sometimes we don't want to. How many of you have ever just said, Holy Ghost, can I just put you on vacation for a minute? I just I got to do something. I can't take it no more. I didn't had enough. I, I'm telling you, I'm about to boil over. See, you can't do that because when you give into the flesh and then you do what that thing is telling you to do, you might jeopardize somebody's life or jeopardize your walk with God. And then when you come back to yourself, it may be too late. You need to understand that because the devil is trying to tie you up and wrap you up into something that you can't get out of. And God is trying to give you the, the understanding that, listen, your flesh has got all of these evil passions and desires. It's working on your will so that you can deliberately choose those desires, whereas the Holy Spirit is in you and he has deliberate passions and desires. He loves you. He has affection for you. He wants to he wants to bring you into the blessing of God. But you've got to yield to the spirit's uh, desires and the, the spirit's uh, affections and his lust for you. So the flesh is fighting and the spirit is fighting. They used to have cartoons back in the day where a person was trying to make a decision. And this is, I'm dating myself, but this is back years ago. And they would have the character sitting there and the, and the character would be sitting in the front of the screen. And then on one shoulder would be the devil and the other shoulder would be like an angel. And they were both speaking to that person. And then based off of who the person listened to, that's what they would follow. Well, that's that, that, that was the world's way of trying to show you good and evil. But that, that's really talking about the truth. It, except that only is that Satan's spirit is inside of you, not sitting on your shoulder and that the Holy Ghost is inside of you. And the Holy Ghost is not an angel and the devil is not an angel. The devil can't get inside your body. He's an angel. He can't inhabit anybody. And, and, and the Holy Ghost, who is the spirit of God, he can inhabit you. Demons can get into you because they're disembodied spirits, but the devil can't get inside of you. And he can only be in one place at one time. And so you need to understand something here that in your body, in your spirit, and in your body, in your soul, there are two natures at war with each other. One is lusting and passioning after the desires of the evil of the world, and the other is the Holy Spirit who is lusting. See, it's not you desiring what the Spirit wants for you. It's the Holy Spirit that's lusting and desiring for you. The Holy Spirit is giving you the passion. You don't have a passion on your own. You got to get that from the Holy. It's the Holy Ghost that's lusting for the good things of God in your life. That's why you got to yield to the Holy Spirit so then you can have his passion and his desire. That's why we hunger and we thirst at the righteousness because the Holy Spirit is hungering and thirsting for righteousness to be inside of your body. So the Bible says then, that uh, uh, the flesh lusts against the spirit, the spirit against the flesh. These are contrary the one to another. In other words, they're at war with each other. And the reason why is so that you can't do the things that you want to do. In other words, the, the, the flesh is warring against the spirit over your will because the flesh doesn't want you to do what God wants you to do. And so if you give in to the flesh, then you will not do what God wants you to do. But if you give in to the spirit, then you will not do what your flesh wants you to do. All right, and let's go back and let's take a look in verse 18. But if you be led of the spirit, you are not under the law. Did you get that? But if you be led by the spirit, you are not under the law. And what law is that? It is the law of sin and death. When you give in to the flesh, then the law of sin and death 
which the devil controls, will then keep you in slavery and bondage to it. But the Bible says in the book of Romans, there is therefore now no condemnation, no judgment to them that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Now, getting back to this verse here, he says here that if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. That is the law of sin and death. As long as you're led by the spirit, then the law of sin and death cannot rule over you. It cannot rule poverty, sickness, and spiritual death in your life because the law of the spirit of life, which is love, joy, peace, goodness, meekness, kindness, temperance, meekness, gentleness, and faithfulness, and, and, the, and the gifts of the Spirit. It's the character of God. It's the power of God. And then it is the salvation of God. That is the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus. And when you yield to that, then you will be blessed of the Lord. You will be blessed of God. You see, you got to prepare yourself You've got to prepare yourself to enter into the cyber world. You've got to prepare yourself because your flesh is already wanting to do what they're doing on, the, uh, on social media. Your flesh has got a strong, passionate desire. It's looking, it's longing, it's lusting. It wants to do what they're doing on Facebook. It wants to do. It wants for you to put the pictures on Instagram that the world's putting on there. It wants you to do the dances that TikTok is dancing to. It wants you to lie and to cheat and to talk about people like Facebook wants you to do. Come on and hear what I'm saying. It wants you to get in there on Snapchat and snap folks up. This is what the devil wants. This is what he wants you to get in the clubhouse and then begin to uh, talk about stuff that's of ungodly and wicked and, and evil and hatred. Hatred. This is how the devil operates. And if you got a passion for that, then when you go on social media, your spirit and your soul are already attacked by that sin nature on the inside of you. And you'll go in there and you'll draw it right to yourself and you'll begin to get those desires filled with you. And remember, the lust and the world passes away. Once you get those desires for the world, they take you on a path and they lead you down a path that's going to destroy you and destroy your life. Listen, you have got to prepare yourself before you enter into the cyber world. Thursday, we're going to talk about your tongue and how the devil, through these lusts, takes complete control of your tongue and you talk yourself into death. That's what we're going to talk about Thursday. Thursday when we get back into this message of called social media addiction. You need to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying, because God is trying to get you free from the law of sin and death and get you free from being addicted to social media so you can use social media the way that God intended for it to be used. Until Thursday, be blessed and remember what God said in Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing, absolutely nothing shall by any means hurt you. God bless you. God keep you. We'll see you Thursday in Jesus holy and majestic name.